Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15 18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. When the National Committee for Religious Freedom, headed by former U.S. Senator and Religious Freedom Ambassador Sam Brownback, needed a bank account, they went to J.P. Morgan Chase. After only a few weeks, they learned their account had been closed. I went in to make a deposit at a branch here in Kansas uh, about three or four weeks after we'd opened up the account, I think, and the teller there said uh, that account's been closed. I go... What? I uh, said, yeah, it's, uh, that account's been closed. Your funds will be being sent to you in a couple of weeks. And then later they came back and said, well, if you'll disclose who gives uh, more than 10% of your funds to you and your criteria for supporting candidates as a 501c4, we'll consider reopening up the account. Brownback says he received an apology letter, but still doesn't know why the bank made the decision. We want some real answers as to why this happened is, you know, and normally what I found is that most people just kind of slink away and just, okay, I got debanked or I got deplatformed, I'll go do something else or I'll find another way. And we thought that's the very reason we exist, the National Committee for Religious Freedom, is so you can have a free exercise, which includes public or private and should include your commercial transactions too. CBN News contacted J.P. Morgan Chase about the incident and they assured us that they would never discontinue a relationship because of a religious or political affiliation. And we didn't with this client. We're not proud of how we handled communicating with this client about what we needed from them and have apologized verbally and in writing. And while J.P. Morgan Chase didn't give us a reason for the account closure, they did say we are required by anti-money laundering laws to conduct customer due diligence. Wondering whether it was discrimination, the National Committee for Religious Freedom has started a website called Chased Away, encouraging people of faith to come forward if they've been denied service by a company or a bank. It also tells me we need to get people of faith in the boardroom. I think we need to start campaigns to get uh, a person of faith on every major corporate board in America. Used to be companies only wanted your business. These days, they may not if they think you believe in the wrong things. Since the 2020 election, banks and corporations have denied service to some Trump supporters. And Christian employees continue to be fired for speaking out about their beliefs at work. This year, the Canadian government weaponized its financial system against citizens protesting COVID-19 restrictions, freezing their bank accounts. Banking law expert Nicholas Anthony believes American banks could do the same thing. Banks have really a ton of power that people don't realize to shut down accounts, to freeze accounts, and upholding them for really any number of reasons. And worse yet, it could really be for any reason, and we don't get to understand why, because there's many cases in which they're 
prohibited by law from saying what actually happened. Earlier this year, Republicans warned banks to stop taking liberal positions on social and cultural issues. I'd heard of this happening to literally dozens of groups. I've had other people tell me that they got debanked or this insurance company denied them or this happened to this group. Journalist Rod Dreher, author of Live Not By Lies, warns that increasing numbers of companies care more about their stands on social issues than the bottom line. And he says Christians will be the victims. Corporations like Walmart, Apple and others are richer and more powerful than some countries in this world. They're going to use the power that they have within the corporations and every other institution to persecute the church. Uh, people think I'm radical for saying this sort of thing, but I'm telling you, it's coming. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted in the United States like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things, fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We begin with that massive storm that is sweeping through the country. Blizzard conditions in the northern plains. That's a look right now at Duluth, Minnesota. And destructive tornadoes hitting the south. Dublin's now reported with this weather system. Rob Marciano is live in Louisiana near New Orleans with just a glimpse at the path of destruction. Boy, what a long night it was here in New Orleans and a terrifying 20 minutes yesterday afternoon when a tornado tore through these neighborhoods. This home behind me was lifted up off its foundation and violently slammed to the ground. The exterior walls came 
breathing in while the family was inside. They're okay. okay. As a matter of fact, everybody on this block that we talked to survived miraculously without serious injury. But you see all the damage. There's sheet metal wrapped around this telephone pole, that power line there. There's chunks, entire sections of roofs and walls that are splayed across the ground here. Every home on this street badly damaged, if not destroyed. Dozens, if not hundreds of homes across the western banks of New Orleans now this morning unlivable. Tornado is still there. Overnight, a tornado outbreak hitting Louisiana for the second night in a row. It's right there, by my house. Deadly and destructive tornadoes hammering the state. At least three people now dead because of the storm. Drone video capturing one ripping through the west bank of New Orleans. A massive funnel cloud seen looming over the city Whoa, from the highway. And we were right there on the ground as the threat unfolded. New Orleans now under a tornado warning. The rotation about five miles that way, just over the Mississippi. But with all this rain, we won't see it coming. And it's heading right for downtown. Louisiana not the only one reeling. At least 50 tornadoes reported from Texas to Florida since Tuesday morning. Brandon Mellorine is a boat captain on the yeah, Mississippi. Well. And he tracked the tornado for over four minutes, capturing the moment it crossed the river. Neighborhoods in places like Harvey shredded. Residents here in shock. I survived, you know, Katrina and Rita and all these things I've survived. I've been so lucky and I guess it catches up to everybody at least. Amanda Dufresne in her home of nearly 15 years when the tornado hit away from her husband. And I just grabbed the kids, put them on the ground and got on top of them. Parts of the house now destroyed. What did you feel when you saw her down the street when you got here? Everything else will be rebuilt and bought. You can't replace that. They're certainly grateful this morning. Give you an idea of the frightening power of these tornadoes. This two by six riddled with nails speared into that into that windshield here this the the elderly couple that live in this home the the man he's been building it for years now built it from a little shack up to this now and now this looks to be unlivable and you know this isn't the only tornado that came through the the metro area here one in laplace a little bit farther west in the new iberia where there were injuries and a medical building there all of this happening michael the week before christmas a violent tornado outbreak across the gulf coast Three straight nights of dangerous and deadly weather. Louisiana pummeled Wednesday. Tornadoes reported all across the state, leaving a trail of damage in the New Orleans metropolitan area overnight. Homes in complete ruin, and even this car flipped over in the middle of all the rubble. In Kelowna, just east of New Orleans, local authorities say the damage left one dead and at least seven injured. Mar Marshall told us he lost almost everything. That's, that's my house. That, that so your upside house, down, that, that upside down. Your house was here before? It was right here. And it is what, like 30 feet over in that direction now? My car was parked straight in the yard. In New Iberia, Louisiana, not one, but two tornadoes merging together. The result, neighborhoods left devastated. This is my house right here, y'all. My house is just gone. And this hospital left decimated. <laughs> Windows completely blown out and debris blocking the entrance. For those who've lost their homes, the consolation they've escaped unharmed. Uh, my neighbor lost a life, so like I said, this material stuff can all be replaced. Uh, you can't replace a life. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? We live in a world full of pain and suffering. And there is no one, including Christians, who are not affected by the hard realities of life. The question, why do bad things happen to good people? is one of the most difficult questions in all of theology. God is sovereign, so all that happens must be allowed by Him, if not directly caused by Him. We must understand that human beings cannot expect to fully understand God's thoughts and ways as we read in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. In the book of Job, Job was a righteous man, yet he suffered in ways that none of us can even imagine, as we read in Job 1.1. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. God allowed Satan to do everything he wanted to Job, except kill him, and Satan did his worst. What was Job's reaction? Job's reaction was to trust God and to bless him. Job. 121 and he said naked i came from my mother's womb and naked shall i return there the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord job 
13, 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. Job didn't understand why God had allowed the things he did, but he knew God was good and therefore continued to trust in him. That should be a believer in Jesus' reaction as well. As hard as it is to acknowledge, we must admit to ourselves that we are sinners and there are no good people, as we read in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even on your best day, we are like filthy rags, as we read in Isaiah 64.6. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind, have taken us away. Bad things may happen to good people in this world, but this world is not the end. Christians have an eternal perspective, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Bad things happen to good people, but God uses those bad things for good, as we read in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Bad things happen to good people, but those bad things equip believers for deeper ministry as we read in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Bad things happen to good people, and the worst things happen to the best person. Jesus is the only truly righteous one, yet he suffered more than we can imagine, and we should follow in his footsteps, as we read in 1 Peter 2, 20-23. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Romans 5.8 declares, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Despite our sinful nature, God still loves us. God loves the world so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die for us, as we read in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God allows things to happen for a reason. Whether or not we understand His reasons, we must remember that God is good, just, loving, and merciful. Psalm 135.3 Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praises to His name, for it is pleasant. Bad things happen to us that we simply cannot understand. Instead of doubting God's goodness, our reaction should be to trust Him. As we read in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. U.S. troops in South Korea herald the launch of a space arm at Osan Air Force Base south of Seoul. Following a similar ceremony in Hawaii three weeks earlier, it will be America's eyes in the sky tracking missile activity in North Korea in near real time to detect, disrupt, and destroy. The U.S. military is faster, better connected, more informed, precise, and lethal because of space. Among the nearly 70 ballistic missiles North Korea has test-fired this year is the so-called monster missile, the Hwasong-17. It puts the entire United States within reach and could have the capability of sending multiple nuclear warheads to multiple destinations. 
As North Korea ramps up its military ambitions, be it developing intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, or indeed nuclear testing, Washington, Seoul, and Tokyo are strengthening their military cooperation. But experts in Seoul say that the vision of U.S. Space Forces Korea is wider. It aims to reach across the greater Indo-Pacific region, and that means monitoring and acquiring intelligence on China. Luke. 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. President Dina Boluarte declared the country is now in a state of emergency as demonstrators in Cusco looted stores, burned a television station and tried to storm the airport. In another city, in Puno, protesters also tried to force entry to the runway. The army has been deployed to assist the police in protecting key infrastructure. With blockades on main highways and expanding protests, Boluarte brought forward the plan for general elections again, to be held, she says, a year from now. Protesters are demanding general elections now. Ronald Iscubilca came all the way from Peru's Amazon region. He says he wants his voice heard. We want Congress to close, a change of the Constitution and the new elections. These demonstrators are hoping former President Pedro Castillo will be freed. One week after he tried to dissolve Congress, suspended legal protections and ordered the army to patrol the streets, the former president is detained on rebellion charges. It is likely the judge will order that Castillo remain under arrest. Castillo says his freedom is being restricted and asked the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights to intercede. We've seen so many images from around the world of people living in poverty, starving, and even forced out of their homes because of crises happening in their home countries. According to the International Rescue Committee, in 2014, the number of people in humanitarian need was 81 million. Next year, it's expected to hit 339 million people. The IRC keeps track of countries that it says shows the greatest risk of a new humanitarian emergency. We're joined now by David Miliband, the IRC's president and CEO. It was such an important topic. Let's start out with the watch list, how you decide which countries end up on it. So the watch list that we produce every year is based on 67 different data sources, but also critically the intelligence of our 220 field sites in 40 countries around the world that are either in conflict, countries Syria, Somalia, Ethiopia, or countries that are harboring, sheltering people who are refugees from conflict. And we take that quantitative data and the qualitative data and then produce this watch list, which this year has ranked Somalia at the top, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Yemen. Those are the key countries at the top of the list. But here's the thing that really strikes me. Of that 20 countries on the watch list, they account for 90% of all the humanitarian need in the world. Mm. You also talk about the accelerators. Um, what are those? The three accelerators that we see in our work are first of all conflict. That's the biggest driver of crisis today. There are 54 civil wars, wars within states going on around the world, plus, of course, the Ukraine conflict. Those wars create humanitarian devastation. Uh, the second is the climate crisis, which is not the crisis of our children or the crisis of our grandchildren. It's today's crisis. And in countries like the US, of course, we're quite well protected. The infrastructure is resilient. But in countries like Yemen or Somalia or Ethiopia, Pakistan recently with the, with the floods, livelihoods and infrastructure gets washed away. So the climate crisis and the climate emergency is second and third. And this is the kicker this year. This is what's driven up the numbers so much in this year. The economic shocks, not just of the end of COVID, but more specifically, the Ukraine war driving up food prices, driving up energy prices. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages 
just to barely get enough to eat, as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. Despite the security cameras, more things were stolen in hungry supermarkets this year. Thefts have increased by more than 22%. Hungarian police data shows there were more than 8,000 thefts nationwide in the first 10 months of this year, mainly from large supermarkets and tobacco stores. Electronics and expensive drinks used to be the main attraction for thieves, but now it's salami and cheese. Rising prices has meant the cost of meat has gone up by 40% and dairy 75%. One of the sellers told us previously higher valued products were stolen, but now people steal an apple or a potato. Budapest was hardest hit with more produce stolen. The spokesperson for Hungary's largest supermarket chain, CBA, in the capital, says it's not just the amount that's disappearing that's the worry. The way the thefts are carried out have changed too. They've become more aggressive. It's becoming more common for the perpetrator to pull a knife and start fighting with security staff. The larger chains have reacted quickly to the negative trend. They've improved their camera systems, hired guards, and put alarms on more products. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.